Be proud of what you have accomplished. You will carry the name of Cleveland Parish the rest of your life. Believe me, I do. More people in this world know I'm from Homer and they know where Homer is. You know that cheer they used to have, I'm from Homer and couldn't, or Hansville and couldn't be prouder? Well, that's the way it is. And I honor that. You know, usually I'm on the road like this. I was thinking with all that great music and that great praying there and he talked about success. I think he saw my notes. But, and then we leave here and we go to Las Vegas for Saturday night. There won't be any amazing grace in Las Vegas. There'll be amazing grace, but it won't be in that book. <laughs> so it's a totally different audience. They'll know where they have food like this. Oh my goodness. They eat grass and weeds in Las Vegas. I don't mean weed weed. I mean just grass and grass. <laughs> and so what I'll do is talk to them about the library. I'll tell them that we have 3.8 million volumes in the library. I don't know what they're there for, but it makes a good showing. <laughs> we have 14,374 males. Boy, that's something. We have 15,175 males. So you honor students, if you're planning, if you're a guy, come on. If you're a girl, you better look someplace else. And here's the thing I'll tell them. The average age of every freshman is 18.7. That's probably about normal. But look at this. The average age of a graduate, 23.7. Man, they love it when they get to Baton Rouge. They just kind of hang out. And then here's the, the last statistic I'll tell them. Automobiles on the campus now. We've got about 25,000 automobiles. There's 15,000 parking spaces. So 10,000 of them are just circling all the time. Circling, looking for apartment. And they say that per student, there's 1.2 automobiles per student. Now you go figure that one out. So anyway, that's LSU. Well, you know, we travel a lot and we go to hotels and sometimes we don't know what our room number is. I checked in the other day and I went to the wrong floor, knocked on the door and somebody said, I'm sorry, I'm in another town. Well, we were in the gym, the workout room, what they call it, and this old guy was in there and a beautiful young lady came in and he said, he called the trainer over and he said, uh, which machine would I impress her the most on? The trainer said, the ATM. <laughs> You'll get that one later. This, this same gentleman got to feeling good so he went out and bought him a red converter. And he got out on the interstate and he opened it up to 70, 75. 80, 85, and about that time Sheriff Bailey came along. But he saw the state trooper light, wow, 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 behind him. He pulled over. The state trooper came up and said, Now look, it's 30 minutes till I get off. If you have a solid excuse, we just won't write this ticket. He said, Well, officer, it's like this. 20 years ago, a state trooper ran off with my wife, and I thought you were bringing her back. <laughs> You'll get some of those later. <laughs> I spent the first 29 years of my life in Cleveland Parish. What a great place to grow up and a great place to attend school. And as all some of this is going on, I think, you know, we used to play hide and go chase in the funeral home. <laughs> One of our classmates worked in the funeral home and we would hide in those caskets. Man, they could never find you in there. And in the First Baptist Church, man, that's the best place in the world. Get in the Baptist and hide, they'll never find you. So a lot of good things happened. We didn't have all these things. Like, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have laptops, iPads, iPhones, Twitter, and Twix, and text, and everything else. So we had to make up our own little game. We had drive-ins. I know none of you remember this, but remember like the purple cow? Is that all right? That shows you're 80 years old. <laughs> then we had the eat and tell. It was on this side of home. And, uh, and we had we had pickup trucks. Now, you have pickup trucks these days. We had old pickup trucks. I don't think they made new pickup trucks. And you know what we do? We drive around the square. Ride right around the square. That was the most stupid thing. I, why would we ride around? There's nobody on the square to even look at it. And if you could hold that arm out like this, it was how cool you looked holding your arm out. No air conditioning, so you had to have one of that. We were really cool. But that's what we used to, to, to get, on, get our way around. Now, in my own right, I was a scholar in Cleveland Parish. Oh my 
high school. I was a 4.0 student. Hold your ball. One point in the ninth grade, one point in the tenth grade, one point, four point oh. I was there. Now, seriously, I wasn't a scholar as you are, but I did receive a great education in Cleveland Parish. The education here provided me with the tools and the skills to work and compete at all levels. And you may not think what you're getting is good. If not, it's great. And now you need to take it and go forward. I can remember two courses. They, I never did figure out who they was in high school. They told me that in order to go to college, I didn't know where I was going, that you had to have two years of a foreign language. Now that wasn't made a requirement until 1987, but home high school knew it in 1952. It's amazing. So I took two years of Latin, Northwest Protestant Louisiana taking Latin, and there were three Catholics in the school. So you, anyway, so I took that Latin, but I want you to know to this day, those have been the two greatest courses, the foundation of everything that I've encountered. So right there in Omaha High School, taking two courses. You know, I did a, a little research, I lived here a while, but I just want to pull up four personalities. I just grabbed them. You know, there was a guy right here in Hainville named Samuel Albert Bozeman. He became the greatest men's fashion designer in the world, Joffrey Bean. And you guys, when you make a million, you'll go out and you'll go to Macy's and you'll go to all those stores, and there's Joffrey Bean from Hainville, Louisiana. He made one mistake, he went to Tulane. Then, <laughs> In the military side, there was a lieutenant general. Now, a lieutenant general is three stars. The highest you can go is four, unless you become the chief of the Joint Staff, then you get five. Lieutenant General David Wade lived between Homer and, and Amanda. I rode by there just a few minutes ago. There's the steps still there where he lived. He was the commanding general of Barksdale Air Force Base and the Strategic, strategic Air Command. And then, educator, this guy was even before my time, T.H. Harris, former state superintendent of education, came out of this town. And then let's look at athletic. Probably the greatest athlete that ever came out of Cleveland Parish was from Rupal. How many of you scholars know where Rupal is? Scholars. You need to go find that tomorrow. Rupal. The head football coach at LSU, a former coach, was from Rupal. Daniel Tinsley. So you see what has happened right there. And I, you have people coming out of Cleveland Parish. And I want to put one little personal thing in here. At one time, Dr. Patsy Teal Bates was vice chancellor at LSU Shreveport. Mrs. Catherine Shaw Spade was vice chancellor of the LSU Law School. And yours truly was a vice chancellor. At one time, three people from Cleveland Parish held the number two positions at three institutions. Just think, if we could have knocked off those three presidents or chancellors, we'd have been ruining the world right there. But, but that didn't happen. I want to tell you a personal story. I guess all of this is personal. But to the scholars, when I was your age, I had three dreams. Man, that was a lifetime. Three dreams. And so, one of them, I wanted to be able to play in the LSU marching band. I mean, I thought that was great stuff. And then I wanted someday to hope I could be a director of that home high school band. And then the third one was, gosh, someday I hope I could be with the LSU band as a director of something like that. Well, in the eighth grade, we went to Baton Rouge for a music festival. I fell in love with LSU and that band. That had to be it. Forget Tech, forget Northwestern, forget Centenary. It was LSU or Buff. So I graduated from Omaha High School and I go to LSU and I get to play in the LSU band. Dream one. See, it doesn't hurt to dream right now. I, we didn't have interstate then. It was about six hours if you could make it in six. I didn't have a car. I didn't have one of those until 1984 or something. But anyway, I didn't have a car. You could go to Minden and catch a train and ride all night and you can get to Baton Rouge. Well, that's how you got there. 
Well, I got homesick when I got the Baton Rouge. Wow. I wanted to come back to Cleveland Parish. I told my mom and daddy, I'll major in anything at Louisiana Tech if you'll let me come back. Now, my mother and father had a third grade education. They said, you want to go to LSU? You're going to stay at LSU. Now, I didn't know they meant all my life. I thought they were just one of our short period of time. So my mother said, okay, to get you over this, I'm going to come down there and stay with you till you get over this homesickness. I was cured in one day. I never got homesick again. So, there was my mother and father with a third grade education, and they probably had more psychology in them than a lot of professors on there. Well, I stayed at LSU and I graduated. There's only one job in the state, and it was in uh, uh, LaSalle Parish. If you ever been there, you'll never find your way back. But it was the only job. So I interviewed for the job. I want to talk to you about being prepared. They weren't prepared. They didn't have any contracts that day. So they said, go back to Baton Rouge and we'll mail you a contract. I go back to Baton Rouge to get in the dorm the next morning. I leave out the phone ring. I said, well, I better go back. It might be my mother. She might want to see if I'm homesick. So I go back into the phone. It was Mr. F.C. Haley, superintendent of the school of Cleveland Perry, said, I have a job here. I want to offer you. Holy Moses, dream number two. I never went to the post office to get the other contract. See, they weren't prepared. You got to be prepared. So I ended up in Homer, dream number two. Well, during the summers, I'd go to Louisiana Tech and work on a master's degree. That's another point. You just got to keep, you think this is the end of education? Uh-uh. You just now get it started. And so I kept going to Tech. I got that master's degree. And the day I got it, I'm telling you, I didn't even stop. I got in the car and boom, went six hours to Baton Rouge. I walked in to fill out the forms and the lady there said, you know, we've hired a new director of bands and he's looking for an assistant. Ain't no way he's going to hire this redneck. I didn't know anybody. I've been in Homer for seven years. I walk in, I interview, guess where he was from? He was from Shreveport, went to Fair Park High School. Wow, guess what? I got the job. Dream number three. I was 29 years old, my life's over. That's it. I'm through. <laughs> so you see, the point is by dreaming, now think what you want to do. You'd be surprised how fast those things happen and come around. So we keep working and we keep going after it. And all of that time, I was prepared. I was ready. I may not have known what I was going to do, but they didn't know that. I was prepared. I had a good training at Homer High School in the band. I got a lot of good training there. I had good training in, in coming back to be able to teach here. And I had good training at LSU. I was prepared. I was ready. Are you prepared? Are you ready? Life is going to pick up a real fast pace right here pretty soon for you. And you better grab it. It's going to come by. An opportunity is going to be there. And will you be ready? Have you ever stared out the window and wondered why in the world am I in school? Probably because your mom and dad do to get up and go to school. But you know, you go to school to learn about society. You go to school to be civilized. You go to school to learn about the world. And that's why you're there. What you learned in kindergarten, do you remember that far back? you remember the first word you learned in kindergarten? What you learn in kindergarten will come up again and again in a far more complex form. Lectures, internet, Bibles, college rules, courts of law, sermon. Throughout your lives, you will wrestle with right or wrong. You will wrestle with that. Good and bad, big time. And truth and lies, all the time. You have to be prepared for that and really know what you need to know you learned in kindergarten. Now listen, just listen, what you learned in kindergarten and see how that works today. Share. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Tonight, when you go home, put things back where you found them. Put up your clothes. <laughs> Clean up your own mess tomorrow when you have breakfast and head off to school. Don't take things that aren't yours from the locker room. 
Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hand before you eat and flush. <laughs> Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Leave about, live a balanced life. Sing some, work some, play some, dance some. Don't be a square. Get involved in life. Take a nap every afternoon you wish. <laughs> and when you go out into the world, watch out for traffic, hold hands, and stick together. And one of the first words we learned in kindergarten, you don't do it that way. We had a little Dick and Jane book. Any of you moms and pawpaws remember that? The first word was L-O-O-K. Look. Open your eyes. Look. Hey, what was the what was the dog's name in the Dick and Jane book? Do you remember? Spot. And the cat. Scholars, your parents can't cut it. Alright, everything you need to know is in there somewhere. The Golden Rule, love, basic sanitation, ecology, politics, same living. Think what a better world it would be if all, the whole world, had milk and cookies about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and got our blankies and lay down for a nap. The world probably wouldn't be here when you woke up. Or if all the governments had as a basic policy to always put things back where they found them and to clean up their own mess. Just think, if the government would do that, and it is still true, no matter how old you are, when you go out of here tonight, when you go back to that school, stick together, hold hands, and stay together. Stay contacted. Early Dean was in class with me. I heard her talk about, this was 60 years ago, I heard her talk about Joe this, Joe that. You know how senior girls are. Oh, Joe this and Joe this. I never met Joe until tonight. Joe Richardson, right here. <laughs> so anyway. Now, we've gotten through all this. Just a quick few pointers on success. And preacher, you hit it right on the head in your prayer about success. Believe you can. Folks, I'm telling you, you got to believe. You've got to believe that you can do it. Have the right association. That is very important. Watch out who you hang around with, because you're going to get to smell them just like them. <laughs> Be careful with that. Keep a positive attitude. In some of those situations I was in, I didn't have a clue, but nobody else knew it. I was Mr. Positive all the time. You can figure out a way. It's amazing how your brain will kick in when you really need it to. So stay positive. Ignore idiots and zealots. <laughs> These people will try to rain on your parade because they ain't got no parade. So stay away from them. Keep your own mind and keep focused on the front. And you know, all this is about is a dedication to lifelong learning. You gotta go to school. You gotta keep getting smart. You hit it when the internet was just coming in. You're a cool dude. I mean, you really are. When you get to be about 60 and they come in with something else, you're going to be scratching and grabbing to keep up with those young people. So stay into lifelong learning. Dedicate yourself to that. The person who will emerge victorious most of the time is the person who wants it the most. Do you want it the most or are you just going to sit back? If you want it, you'll get it. Victory does not always go to the swift. Victory does not always go to the powerful. And victory does not always go to the lowest price. Victory goes to the best prepared and most responsible person. Again, you're the brightest and best of Flavin Parish. Now get that education and do something with it. Be prepared. Don't ever give up. Don't ever, ever give up. Remember, when you go out into the world, hold hands and stick together. And when you go home tonight, you scholars, I want you to go to that parent or that guardian or that grandparent and I want you to go there and hug them and tell them, I love you. They have sacrificed tremendously more than you'll ever know.
for you. And they deserve that tonight. Now you do that for me. And I'm going to check on it in the morning. <laughs> you are the best. Be proud. Be strong. God bless the student, the scholar of Clayton Parish. God bless the Clayton Parish school system. God bless 